Okay, when you first get your block of clay given to you like this, you need to divide it into three parts. So you don't need all three parts to be completely equal, but you do need two parts to be equal. So just make sure at least two of them are as equal as you can. And what you're going to do with the third piece is you're just going to tuck it. You're going to tuck it back into the bag so it doesn't actually dry out. Because remember, as soon as clay hits air, it starts drying. So to keep it moist, you have to keep it in the bag. All right, with your two pieces, you're going to start by padding them. This is the easiest way to start getting it into two spheres. You could roll it or you can you know, roll it in your hands, but I find it's good to just start by patting it and then you can roll. That's the fastest way to do it. So you need two balls. That's step one. Step two, you're going to actually make a couple of pinch pots. So you stick your thumb into the center, but not all the way through. And then you'll use your fingers and your thumb like this to actually pinch it and make it into a pot. You need to feel that all the walls are the same thickness. You don't want it too thin at the top and then really fat at the bottom. You need to try and keep it nice and even. You're making a bit of a nest like this, okay? But you cannot have, don't make your tops really thin like this, okay? That's not gonna work. You need to absolutely have it all roughly the same thickness. Then you are gonna tap it on the table like this so you flatten that edge, like so. And then you'll go ahead and do the same thing with the second one. If you find that you get the right thickness on one side but another side is actually quite thin, you can push it around, especially if your clay is really fresh. Retap it on the table and then eventually it will actually mold into the same shape that you're after. Okay. Step three. You're going to get a piece of newspaper and scrunch it into a ball. You're going to stick it inside one of those halves. Then you're going to grab a fork. If you don't have a fork, you can grab a skewer and you're going to score the flat edge of both sides. So remember when we're doing our vocabulary, we talked about slurry and scoring. This is extremely important and I'll explain. If two pieces of clay are just stuck together and then you smooth it over and it's like this, as it dries, it'll actually crack apart and those body parts that you've just put on your animal will just crack off. If you score it, it's like creating teeth and they lock in together. And then when you smooth the outside of it, you can't even notice. Then as it dries and it shrinks, it's locked in. I see so many times if people's arms and legs and tails fall off their animal, I can tell straight away by looking at those flat edges that have fallen off if they've scored or not. So you need to make sure it's scored really well. Do it quite deep as well. If you do it really thin, it's not actually effective. Okay, then you're going to take one of your tools or you can use your finger and you're going to use, dip it in the slurry and you're going to wipe the slurry on one side of the clay. You don't want to do it on the second side because otherwise it'll end up too sloppy and then you won't know what to do with it and it will all just get really messy. So just one side like that. Place your newspaper back inside if you've taken it off, like so. Then you're going to put both sides together. When I do this, I press and squeeze. It will look like a macaroon that you can buy at McDonald's, but don't eat it, it tastes gross. If you've got one side fatter than the other, and I deliberately did this, because I know a lot of you do this, don't stress. You're just gonna simply smooth it all over. 
So now you can go ahead and you can smooth that. So now you have a hollow egg that's got newspaper in it. Now, we talked about this in class. If you've got air bubbles in your clay, they will explode in the kiln. But the whole purpose of having a hollow egg is this is going to form the base of your body and we'll use a skewer later on to actually put a hole in various places of it to release that air. But at this stage, it's just a way of helping your clay dry faster and to protect it from blowing up because it's too thick. Right, so the next step is you're actually going to pat this down so you can smooth it, but also you need to be aware of what the shape of your animal is. If you've got a long dolphin shape, you need to actually squeeze it and pat it and you will need to add a big tail length on later. If you've got something like a cat and it's sitting on its bottom, you might think about actually squeezing it a little bit in the waist and giving it a bit of a waist and a fat end on the other end. So you're just wanting to try and elongate your egg to sort of suit the body shape of the animal you're doing. And I'm using the palm of my hand rather than my fingers because my fingers will be really harsh and actually cause really big ridges in it, whereas the palm of my hand can make it a lot easier. You can still use your thumb to smooth bits, so you can see here I've got a bit of a peanut thing happening. Now I'm going to be doing a dog for you today because I believe a dog will show you the different um, parts that you want to know really well. And I'm also going to add wings on it because a lot of you are doing wings. So we're doing a winged dog. So if your animal is going to be standing on four legs, it has to be about this way. And then you'll need to think about how you're going to add your legs if it's going to be sitting upright you'll actually want to flatten the base of it and this is where you want to start using your bat because if you keep sitting it on your bat it won't stick all right so there's my base for my first animal now i'm actually going to talk about some individual body parts for those of you with an animal that is standing up you're actually going to have to put the legs underneath. The best way to approach that is to get your spare clay, roll a little bit of a fat coil, tap it on the ends, so you've got a short fat cylinder. Now I know some of you want some delicate legs, you don't want fat short cylinders as your legs. However, you do need to realize that your legs have to hold the body weight of your clay piece. So even though you might want it delicate, it needs to be strong enough to hold it. If you've got something here like a penguin or a duck or a bird and you want delicate legs, what you're going to have to do is you're actually going to have to have the legs just sitting out the front and have it sitting on its bottom, otherwise it won't work. But let's start by showing you some regular legs. So you can see already I've made two very quickly. I'm going to make two more. So I just grab a little wad of it, I roll it into a cylinder like this, tap, tap, roll it again, try and get it roughly the same as the others, I'm going to get four. This is ideal for people doing turtles or tortoises, um, people doing elephants, alright, people doing little dinosaurs, now you'll see that one of them is actually really short, but I'm going to show you what we're going to do in a moment. Okay, now whenever you attach any body parts, you need to do that number one thing that we're always talking about. You need to score and slurry. So first of all, mark on your creature where you want those legs. So I'm going to go here and here and here and here like this. I'm also going to score my legs at the top. slurry again you only need a little bit of slurry if you go overboard with your slurry you're gonna have it all over your clay piece in no time and your hands will be disgusting right so now what you need to do is stick them in place 
sometimes it's easier to work one at a time. So I'm just going to lay him there and hope he doesn't tip over. Next thing you need to do is you need to get some more clay. If you ever run out of clay at any point, just come and ask me and I'll give you more. Okay, so what I'm going to do is roll a thin coil. You can do that on your newspaper, you can do it in your hands, but you need it to be long enough to go around that limb that you've just added. So I've got about that length. And now this top one here, I'm going to wrap it around. If I've got too much, I can just break it off. And then, again, any little bits like this, don't leave them sitting on your table, squash them into your original clay, otherwise it dries out. The smaller bits dry out real fast. Then, you're gonna use your finger or a tool to actually smooth that on, and then you're gonna have this beautiful leg attached. Now, what if you've got two legs really close to each other, and it's actually really difficult to get in there? This is where this tool is perfect. Okay, you can get right in there, into these little areas that your fingers won't reach, and you can smooth them out. This is ideal for things like when you're doing in between wings, when you're doing ears, all of that jazz. There, and I've got one leg attached already. Can you see that? You also need to make sure it's standing up the way you want it to, so test it. If it's not standing right, you need to push the bottom and get it right. Anytime you're doing this part with the legs, if you feel like it's too fat in between the legs, you can get your tool and you can actually carve bits of it out as well. A lot of people think once they add the clay, that's it. But don't forget you can take the clay off just as much as you can put it on. All right, so see I've carved a whole lot out there just to try and get those legs looking a bit nicer. Okay, so I hope that gives you a bit of an idea. All right, there's two back legs. If I was gonna attach the two front legs, it'd be like that and then we'd have our, our animals standing on all fours. But I'm gonna stop there because I wanna show you something else with this. If your animal is one of these animals sitting on its bottom, voila, you've got it sitting on its bottom and then you can add your head, you can add your other little arms. All right, I'm not gonna do that right now because I actually wanna show you another type of way of doing legs. Okay, if you've got a dog or a cat or an animal that's sitting upright, they actually have these big round hip things happening on their back legs. So we're actually gonna start with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my spare clay. I'm gonna roll two little balls about this size. I need to make sure it's the right size for my animal as well. So you may have to test this. If you roll it and then you try it and you don't like it, just do it again. So here's my dog's body. Here's my two little balls. I'm actually gonna flatten them but only on one side, because I want to have this sort of round thing happening at the top. And I'm going to attach that on the side. So first of all, I need to work out where the front of my body is. So it's about there. So I'm going to score it. I'm going to fix up my stuff. So score. Because I've been adding lots of slurry, my stuff is quiet and moist at the moment. Okay, so score this as well. Always score both. Bit of slurry. Here's the trick. When you attach this, remember where the front of your animal is. You don't want to smooth in. You don't want to smooth in this bit at all. You want that to stay like a really nice lumpy bit that stays apart. So what you can do is you can smooth the back of it. And you don't need to add a quill to this either. You want to try and keep it having that really nice deep line at the front. Okay, so there's one. Now I'm going to do the other one. Make sure you get it evenly on the right side. Got to push that down a bit. yet. 
That's just hips. So now we get some more clay. And you're going to roll some fat coils. These don't have to be as fat as your previous coils if you um, did a standing up animal. These are thinner. Tap them at the end. And first of all, you're going to test it. So see what it looks like. Can you get where it's going? All right. So then I'm going to flatten the bottom of it like this. Now before I attach this coil, I'm actually going to make my little paw because I find it easier to do it while I'm holding it. So I'm just going to bring you a bit closer. Okay, so here's how I'm going to make a little paw. I'm going to start by just rounding off the end of the clay like this. Then I'm going to squeeze it a little bit to flatten it out. I'll just move my body over. Then I'm going to take my skewer, make sure the end of it's clean, and try and show you like this. All right, hopefully you can see this. I'm actually going to get my skewer and I'm going to do that line and I'm going to completely separate that bit of clay. Completely separate, completely separate. So I'll give you a closer look. Okay, so see what I've done there? Now, I'm going to really gently get in here with my fingers and I'm just going to smooth, just pinch the end of those and make them really rounded and soft because they're little pores. Now, you need to make sure to do these legs, you are using very soft clay. If your clay is starting to crack and it's very dried out, you need to come and see me straight away. It won't work for paws. Now, we do not want our paws all spread out like that. That's ugly. So what we're going to do is we're going to squeeze them gently together. See, like that. And then we're just going to smooth the top. And then you have these really cute little paws happening. You can play around with them a bit more if you wish. You can also get the skewer and just do a light indentation in the end of them to make it look like little claws. So you can do that sort of thing. So now I'm going to attach that to my leg. So I make sure that's a bit flat. I'm going to score underneath. I'm going to score the top of my foot where it's attached. Slurry. <laughs> Voila. And now I'm going to smooth that on the side. And I'm going to smooth it underneath, even though that's not part of the underneath part. I need it to be well attached at some anchor point. So I'm choosing underneath to do that. So there's one leg. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. think the front paws are going to be really scary. They're a lot easier than you think. Okay, so I'm just going to break off a bit, make a coil. I'm not going to make it as small as that paw. I'm going to make it longer because you want this sort of thing happening. So, the two bits of clay. I'm making them longer than I need them as well and I'll show you why in a moment can be a bit thinner. Okay, you can kind of see that's what, where we're aiming. Put away what I don't need. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to smooth the end of each paw and then I'm actually going to bend it over like this and I'm going to put it against the body 
and try and get the exact bend that I want. And do the same with the other one. Flatten the end of it a bit. Remember you want to put those little claws in in a minute. Oops, get your little dog leg happening. Put it against the body. Smooth it on there so you can see if you're happy with it or not. Now that's going to be a little bit fat, so a lot of that, if you're using soft clay, it's all just going to really easily just smooth on there. But here's something we're going to do that's a bit tricky. Before we do that, we might not be happy with quite how fat the gut is on this dog, so we could always smooth it down a bit. But I'm not going to smooth it down, I'm going to push it up. I'm going to actually push it up so it goes into the chest a bit more. So it's not quite as fat down the bottom. I wanted it fat at the beginning but now I've changed my mind. So this is what you've always got to be aware of. As you start putting body parts on, your design might evolve a little bit. Okay, so see how you got this thing happening? If you're making a frog, that would become the head. So now, if I put my legs against this, because it's a bit more hollowed, suddenly it looks way better. Okay, I've accidentally pushed that core apart, so I'll do that. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to slurry and I'm going to score and I'm going to attach it. on it but it depends on if you need it to stand on the legs just to sit upright because people that have got an animal that's standing up not sitting down typically need um, to do their legs first so what I'm going to do now is just roll some ball to get the size of the head I want way too tiny all right you need to have a good eye for that and you need to think about how much clay you actually need so I'm going to get out a bit more lot more. Okay, always test it. It's probably still not enough. Remember it's a dog so you want a snout on it. So you want to be able to actually squeeze that snout into it or add it on. If you're doing a cat it's exactly the same principle, it's just shorter. So again just sort of test it. At any time when you've got soft clay and you test something and you don't like a shape, you can actually change it. So we've just got to get that basic shape on there. I'm going to add a little bit more clay because it's easier to carve it off later than it is to add it on half the time. So 
So while I'm doing my ball, I'm actually deliberately squeezing it into a snout. Now those of you who didn't do that and you need to add a snout, you'll actually just break off a bit like this and you'll add it on. So I always try and add on a snout and make it quite square on the end to start with, especially if it's something like a dog, and then you can push it out because then you'll start to get that sort of shape happening automatically and you can add to it after. Right, top of the head's looking a bit fat there. You can choose to shape your head before you add it on if you wish, or you can add it on and then you can add bits and stuff onto it as you go. So, I'm actually going to do the mouth on this dog before I add, before I add the mouth on, before I add the head on, I'm gonna add, do the mouth. So I'm just using my thumb to spread, spread the clay back from the nose to give it this nice smooth sort of thing happening. And don't worry about all these gathered up bits at the top, you can deal with them later. And you'll notice I have a little crack there that automatically formed in the shapes that I want. So I'm gonna show you more of that first. Just move them over. So this is where I'll get my skewer. Skewer is your best friend. And you're gonna just lightly draw out where the nose will go and then the mouth. So I'm sort of going that sort of shape, right? Nose, mouth. Now where that goes, I'm just gonna show you closer. I'm actually gonna carve that really deep. It's a little bit like the um, what I did with the paws. Okay, and then I'm even gonna carve this stuff here out. And if you go deep enough, it'll open the whole mouth up a little bit. You can typically open it right up. Right, but I don't want to open it right up. I just want to define it. You can also go down the sides. And you can also use the side of your skewer to just press that, to just go in and press. That way you get this nice little lift on the lip. See, I'm getting that cute little lift. Then I can use my fingers to actually smooth that. I'm gonna smooth all in here as well. Look at your different tools all the time of where you can use your tools to smooth. All right, and I wanna smooth these little cheeky bits. And then I'm gonna push it up. I'm gonna push his mouth back in. Okay, but I'm going to leave this bit on the side because I think that's kind of cute. But I need to also define it more on this side. See, I've got a cute little mouth there. Then, if you don't like this being so square, you can just round it off a bit. And you can use your skewer to do your little whisker marks. If you look closely on a dog or cat photo, you'll see they're actually in line, but you don't have to make them in line, it's up to you. Okay, so now I've got this, I still want to add on a bit of a nose. So I'm gonna get a tiny, tiny little bit of clay. And I'm gonna sort of squeeze it into that. Well, I'm gonna put it straight on there. So you can score it again. Score, score, score. Tiny bit of slurry. That's too much slurry, so take it off. I'm gonna press that nose on there, and that nose is too big. So then, press him on. Top of the nose, I'm gonna smooth it back. So it becomes part of the snout. Then, because I don't want it round there, I want it to have that square look, I'm going to use my skewer to push, push that shape back into it. I'm also going to use my skewer to give him nostrils. And I'm going to go really, really deep and then wiggle them around because this helps put air inside the head. I'm going to make my nostrils too big, deliberately.
I'll show you why. So make your nostrils too big, smooth it back, and then push it back together. Okay, always look at it from the front to get that right shape that you want as well. Alright, and now I've got this nose. I need to make sure it's even. You can also do the little ridge down the middle if you wish. Make it even. I'm trying to do this upside down so it doesn't look even. You guys, I'd love you to make it way smoother than that. Okay. Alrighty. So now you have a snout with a bit of a mouth happening. Can you see that? I'm going to add this dog's head to the body now before I actually do any more on this. But before I add it, I need to make my coil, get my coil ready. So that's already reasonably flat. If it's not flat, you can get one of these tools to sort of flatten it. If you feel game, you could turn it upside down and flatten it. I'm gonna make sure I've got the head right, flatten him so you can at least sit there. Don't stress about ears, don't stress about eyes, we're gonna do those next. But just first of all, we're gonna get the neck on. So I'm getting more clay so I can put his neck on. Getting my coil ready. Need to make sure his head's facing the right way. Make sure I'm happy with the shape. Give him more slender shoulders. I can lift it up a bit if I want. Your clay is completely, if you've got it nice and soft, you can shape it really quite well. So before I add more on here, I just want to make sure I've got his body the shape I want. Your thumb is your best tool. Just doing these big sweeping motions actually helps smooth it right up. Um, I find your thumb is actually better at smoothing than your fingers, believe it or not. Okay, so, giving him better shoulders. He, he could still be smoothed over here. I can still add more to that later. You don't have to do it all at once. All right, and... All right, so I'm just building it up a little bit more. So my egg is no longer an egg at all, okay? I've really pushed a lot of this clay up. You can only really do this when it's really soft. Just remember that, guys. Okay, I'm scoring. This is a head and I want it to stay quite solid on the body. So I am going to score it very heavily and I'm gonna put a lot more slurry. I need this really secure. You do not want your head falling off. Okay, so when I do this, I just want to make sure I'm placing it even. I'm going to stick it a little bit forward because I want to get this nice neck shape happening here. So I'm sticking it a little bit forward and then I'm going to still wrap my coil around but I love this shape here and I want to keep it. So I'm going to put my coil around the back knowing that it may not match up at the front. It's almost like a collar. And now I'm smoothing. And because of this beautiful lip that was on the back, and I filled it with the coil, hopefully I'll be able to get that neck smoothed to go straight into the head because I want that sweep, I want that sweep of the shoulders to go straight into the head. Always have your reference picture with you, your design. If you need to have your Chromebook in front of you because you want a close-up look of a dog's face or um, a dog's shape or whatever your animal is, you're welcome to do that because you need to get the shape right. So again, just looking here, I'm looking at all angles. I want this nice sweep from the chin 
under the neck. Want that beautiful sweep happening. If you've got a really hairy dog, um, like a border collie or something, or you know, a really hairy animal, I'll show you how to add fur after. So this is where I'm coming back. You notice earlier I didn't really smooth the head that much. Also, look at this. Look at the tilt of his head. Think about that. Do I want his head tilted that way or do I want him looking down a little bit? All right. You can move that stuff around and get that just right, but you've got to do that at this point. If you do not do it at this point, it will harden up too much. Okay, so I want his head straight on. I kind of liked the little tilt on his head, but I want to show you guys that you've got to be aware of all that stuff. So I'm at every angle. I'm looking at every angle and I'm thinking about what shape do I want this dog. You can actually fix the um, nose and stuff. You can fix up all those details later, but your solid main stuff has to happen now. Okay. Alrighty. Next we're going to work on the eyes. There's a really cool trick to doing eyes. And... Um, I usually end up showing everybody individually. So I want you to watch this very carefully so that you can remember. So first of all, make sure the area that you want your eyes is nice and sort of smoothed into the shape you want. And you need to work out where you want your eyes. Um, then you want to grab a bit of put it in your slurry. Totally have and now I need to clean it up, sorry. Okay, so look at the size of your animal and look at the tools. In the toolkit at school, we've got um, several sizes of this sort of scoopy spoon thing. See how that one's really tapered? And this one's nice and round and flat. I had that in the slurry and a lot of us do actually mix slurry with that one, so be aware. So this one comes with a knife looking thing on the end, this one comes with like a ball looking thing on the end. So you're wanting the scoopy bit. So you have to think about what size your animal is compared with the scoopy bit. So mine is quite a big dog, so I'm going with the big scoop. So you need to watch this really carefully. I'll pick where I want the eyes to go first. So there and there. So place that mark first, then you're going to take the scoopy tool and you're going to scoop out a big eye socket. You're going to make the eye socket bigger than you need it. Look at this. Okay, but don't go far with the bit you scooped out because that is going to be your eyeball. So then smooth around the eye socket. If you need to take a bit more out, do it. So I've smoothed out this big eye socket. If this dries out, this little bit you've scooped out, then you need to get fresh clay. Now, I always take a little bit away from it because you don't want it to be the exact size of what you've just scooped. You want it to be smaller because you're putting an eyeball back in. So let's take a little pinch off it and roll it back into a ball. And then I'll find my skewer, which I've misplaced. And I'm going to score the inside of the eye socket and I'm going to just score the eyeball a tiny bit and now you only need the tiniest bit of slurry for this. Stick it inside the eye socket, stick your eyeball in, do not smooth your eyeball. Alright, I'm going to show you what we're going to do next. Okay, so I've got this ugly looking thing here. Next I'm going to get more fresh clay, just a pinch. And you're going to roll it into a mini, mini coil, like this. And then basically you're making an eyebrow, but it's not really an eyebrow, it's an eyelid. So I'm going to arch it over, and I'm just going to make sure it fits in the right spot. Okay, so we'll put that one aside, get another little pinch, because you don't want this big dreary eye socket hanging out. So then you're rolling another thin coil. You need to keep this nice and soft. You don't need to worry about scoring that because it is very, very soft. You can add a bit of slurry though, and you're going to put your under 
do the under one first. So your under, your bottom eyelid goes on first, then you're going to smooth it. And if there's too much on the edge, you can either smooth it or you can move it. Then I'm going to get my skewer and I'm just going to go around gently to make sure that stays a nice even shape. Again, you'll do this more carefully than me. I'm working upside down from looking at it. Then you're going to take your top eyelid, more slurry, and you want your top eyelid again. The top eyelid has to be bigger than the bottom one. Sit it over the top, and your top eyelid defines the character as well. So you can make it angry, you can make it excited, you can make it sad, and then you only smooth the top section. He looks a bit sad. Then, the last part of your eye is you get the back end of the skewer and you very gently twist into the pupil of the eye. Then, you have this little eyeball happening. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and make the second one. you need to remember the shape. So for a dog, I'm actually going to do um, triangle shaped ears. So I'm going to get a little ball and I'm just going to use my fingers to just pinch it into the shape I want and then use the base to just tap it. You can literally make a triangle with your hands really quick. So the end of the ear, where it's the furthest away from the hole, I want that to be quite thin, but not heaps thin. So I've gone about that thin. See how it's gone fatter at the bottom? Alright, and I've kept it quite thin at the top. So I'm going to do like, this This is starting to look a bit like a Scooby-Doo type dog. So I'm going to give him big triangle ears, but then flop the ears over. So first of all, I'm just going to show you how to actually put ears on. If you're doing a cat, it's exactly the same concept. Um, Alright, so... <laughs> Actually, they look quite cute sticking up. So, first of all, I'm going to get a second piece of clay and make sure I have both of them roughly the same size before I stick anything on. So, I'll get more clay, do another ball, squeeze it so I can get that same shape. The other way you can do this if you don't want to squeeze is you can use um, a rolling pin and cut them out. But for ears, I think it's just as easy to just squeeze. Pig's ears are similar. I know there's a few of you that have pigs in your design, so you do big triangle ears and then you flop yours over as well. Okay, so you also want to sort of fold them in a little bit. See how it's doing that? So I've got it nice and tapered at the end and then fold it in a little bit at the bottom. Test it out. Okay, they're really big and I'll show you why in a minute because I'm going to actually make them flop over. So. Have any of you got dogs that have floppy ears and you stick them up? This is what it looks like. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just going to shape that around the head first, then leave that shape there. 
work out where on your head you wanted these ears because you're needing you need to skewer that spot. Score it. Okay, so we need to score along here. Score along. If you were doing a cat again, if it was a cat or a little dog, you'd leave the ears sticking up. But because this is a big dog, I'm going to flop them over and I'll show you how to do that after. But literally what I'm doing now is what you would do if you were doing a cat. Or a dog with sticking up ears. Or a bear. If you were doing a bear though, you wouldn't have triangle ears, you'd have little round ones. Alright, so I'm going to stick it on and wrap it nice and round. I am not going to smooth it on the inside, but I'm going to smooth it on the outside. And with my smoothing on the outside, I may need to add another coil. So I'll just press it on. So at the moment it's just pressed on like this. Right. And now on the back, you decide, you need to make the judgment on the back if you need a coil on the back or if you need, if it's fat and you can just smooth it. I'm gonna add a coil just to show you. Stick that coil on, smooth it all together. Again, if you need to use a tool, use a tool because our fingers get really fat when we're trying to do delicate stuff. And I'm sure some of you guys could go way delicate than me with clay if you put your mind to it. Right, this one I've already half smoothed, but that's all right. So, you know, anytime you feel like there's a bit on your clay that's weak, you can always add a coil to it. You can add stuff, you can take it away. Right, so the back is done. I don't want him having this bit right near the eye, because that's pretty wrong. So I'm going to smooth that in there. And it's actually twisting the ear in a bit, which is kind of cool. Alright. Now, we're not quite finished if it was a cat or a dog. I mean a cat or a something else. We're going to actually just fold them in that little bit more. Give them that little bit more shape. One is bigger than the other, but that's okay at this point. Use your skewer. Or you can use a bigger tool. You could use a scoop if you want. But I want you to actually create a big hole at the base of the ear. It goes into the head a little bit. Because that's that's typically, you know, their holes. Ears are holes in our head. And you want to give it that nice big deep hole. Support your ear from the other side in case you accidentally pop it out through the other side of the ear. You don't want to do that. You're just trying to create a bit of depth on the side of the head to show an ear hole. Support it, protect it. Okay, I'll give you a closer look. See, I've done that. And I can smooth that with my tools or I can smooth that with my fingers. Right, now, floppy eared dog. All I'm going to do is very gently, because remember, my clay is drying out as I work. But I'm going to extremely gently fold this over like this. And if I get cracks, I'm going to quickly seal them up as I go. If you're working, if you're wanting to have a floppy eared dog, you need to actually work quite fast because it will dry out. The thinner the clay, the quicker it dries. It's a really good rule of thumb. So now it is a bit tricky for me to get in there, so I'm using a tool. get in here and repair any cracks straight away whether I'm adding a little bit of slurry or more clay I just want to really carefully make sure those cracks aren't there and this is where I can now his ears flipped over I can actually taper the end of it a bit more if I want all right there you go floppy ears dog all right 
this stage, you guys should not be panicking at all about something as easy as a tail. So I'm going to give this guy a tail. I am going to leave room for wings, so I'm going to do something a little bit different and add wings because it's the same as what you guys are doing, you're doing morph creatures. So a tail, I'm just going to get a big chunk of clay and I'm going to shape it first the way I want it and then I'm going to add it on. I'm actually going to have mine curl around.
and smooth the edge of my wings. There are so many ways you can add feathers to your wings. I'm going to show you the really simple way. Um, I'll show you both actually. So, Thank you. 
lost it. If you accidentally break through to the center of the creature, that is fine. Don't worry about that. So if you look here, I've gone actually really deep. Okay, it's pretty soft, so I probably don't need to score much, but I'm going to anyway. I'm going to stick some slurry right into that hole. And now I'm going to push this wing in so that it holds. Then I'm going to quickly make sure I've got some clay handy to roll coils for the outside of it. Because this is where I need to really protect this wing. These wings are very delicate when you first put them on. Always leave your wings till last. If you are doing wings on your creature, do not do them till right at the end because you're going to find yourself having all sorts of trouble wrapping your clay up. This is where you lose body parts. Wings and unicorn horns and stuff like that are typically the things that fall off the most. And legs if people don't do them very well. So guys, to if you are doing a whale or a shark or a dolphin, it is exactly the same principle for attaching your fin that's at the end of your tail. You'll do a really big fat tail down the body and then you'll cut out your fin. Same with dorsal fins, you'll cut them out and then you'll add them on the same way. Okay, so I'm feeling like that's pretty protected. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the second one. Whew. It's very delicate. So I need to make my hole bigger. You can use this tool again if it's a fish and you want to add more scales or you can add some fur and I'm going to show you how to do that now. Okay, to do this final bit, the very last thing you're going to do is you want to add some texture to it and you want to add some smoothing off. So this is where you just go over the whole thing, you'll check it, you'll smooth it. But I want this dog to show that he's got fur, so I'm going to use the skewer or I could use any of the wooden tools and I'm going to come along and I'm actually going to carve some fur into him and I'll show you how to make it look better in a moment because you won't like it at the beginning you can also use the back of the skewer on an angle so you're not just gouging out but you're actually carving out some bits of the fur and you'll see little balls of bits coming off when I do it. I do not want those little balls to stay on the dog at all because those little balls will end up very sharp once it goes through the kiln. So I make sure I get them off. I find the back of the skewer is actually better than the sharp pointy bit. 
Last thing I'm going to do is you ask Miss Trainer which brushes can be used on clay because we have brushes specifically for the clay. Get a little dish of water and you can actually go around your whole creature and you can use your brush to smooth it. It will actually really, really smooth your mouth and get rid of the bits you don't need. Okay, so now you have it. The very last thing you need to do before this guy is ready to dry and go in the kiln is we need to actually get rid of that air bubble that's inside of him. So there's a few ways of doing this. You might, um, we can use a skewer just to put some salt and pepper holes underneath him or we can actually gouge out a hole completely out of the bottom and I prefer to do that and then take the newspaper out because then it's just a lot cleaner and it dries faster. So I'm gonna do that now. Um, I might just wait for him to dry a few moments and then I'll come back and do that. Thank mm -hmm. you.